Hey there! Today I'm going to take you on a walkthrough of Floyd Lamb Park at Tool Springs. If you're heading to this park for the first time, it may surprise you that you turn on a street adjacent to a residential street. Las Vegas has grown out past this area, which used to be north of town. As we drive into the park, you'll stop at the park entrance booth to pay a daily fee per vehicle or purchase an annual pass. I found the annual pass to quickly be a good savings. If you're walking or riding a bike into the park, entry is free. As we drive into the park, everything will be on the right side of the roadway except the bike trails and the Las Vegas Tree Nursery, which will be on the left. Starting on our right, here is the main park itself, with the grassy area out front nearest the parking lots and surrounded by historic ranch buildings. The park is home to a peacock population as well, and they are mostly found in this area. These ponds are stocked and fishing is allowed with a three bag limit. You'll also see some of the covered picnic areas and the restrooms here. As we pass another parking area for the ponds, we pass a large gravel lot separating the main park and ponds from the group picnic area. This area is designed for larger gatherings with more covered picnic area, bathrooms, and privacy from the main park. As we loop around to head back towards the entrance, you'll see mostly brush on the right side until we pass the secluded entrance to the Las Vegas State Tree Nursery, which is operated by the Forestry Service and open to the public. Continuing past a wall of oleander trees, we eventually find two gravel parking lots on the right, which are nearest to the bike trails and pump track. You'll also see a fenced-in parking area which is being used by the park for staging vehicles and equipment. I believe this is for the hay barn renovation which is ongoing. First, Tool Springs is the name of this overall area which is a literal oasis in the desert. Till Springs is one of the few sites in the United States where evidence suggests the presence of man before 11,000 BC. It has also been a watering stop on a stagecoach route, a working cattle ranch, as well as a guest ranch. Throughout the video, I will pop up photos I took at the park of signs explaining the history of the park and structures, as well as better photos of what is shown on the video. Every photo was taken by me, and you can see more on my Instagram, which is linked in my bio and video description. Floyd Lamb Park is the name of the park complex at Tool Springs, which includes the Tool Springs Ranch Historic Area and the Four Ponds, which make up the oasis. It was officially designated a park by the City of Las Vegas in 1964. This is the overall map of the entire park, and you can see the historic ranch area and park, as well as the ponds and group picnic area. Typically there is plenty of parking, although on busier days you might have to park further in the park near the ponds, so this is a good map to see where all the parking areas are located. Next is a map of the historic ranch area, which gives you an overall picture of the layout of the remaining ranch buildings, and even some of the amenities which are now gone. Here's the route I will be walking through this area of the park. As we begin walking through the park, we cross the large grassy area which is often used for picnics, photography, and play. Here's a view of the same area from a different angle. This is also the area most frequented by peacocks which live on site. I love snapping photos of these guys, their colors are fantastic. Here are a few photos which I took of the peacocks here. I titled this photo, Groom's Train, as it reminds me of bridal photos, but peacocks are the male of the species. As I stated earlier, there's evidence that there were visitors to this oasis as far as 11,000 BC. The area was home to numerous Native American visitors in the pre-Columbian period. The response to this vehicle honking is a cacophony of peacocks with their calls, which frankly remind me of a hungry house cat.
The gazebo ahead is often used for wedding ceremonies. According to this sign, in 1904, Tool Springs became a watering stop on the stage route from Las Vegas to the Bullfrog Mining Camps. In 1906, Tool Springs was bypassed by the railroad, which put a damper on further development of the area. Many of the historic buildings belonged to the Tool Springs Ranch, which began in 1941, and the land was purchased and named by a Las Vegas businessman. The Tool Springs Ranch closed in the late 1950s. Next, we arrive at the foreman's house, which was constructed in 1944 to house the ranch foreman and family. The foreman's house is a concrete block construction hosting two bedrooms and one bathroom. The sign also has some older photos of the house, as well as the floor plan from 1978. According to our map from earlier, this building appears to have been a water tower of some kind. At this crossroads of walking path, we can see the outdoor fireplace, water wheel, pump house, and the guest house. In 1948, Tool Springs Ranch began to operate as a guest ranch owing to Nevada law which made divorce residency requirements only six weeks in this state. Persons seeking divorce would stay at the guest ranch for the required six weeks to qualify for divorce in this state, which was easier to acquire than in some other states. This process coined the term divorce ranch. Next, we have the root cellar, which was used to store goods and liquor which were locked away in this concrete-lined underground area. Produce from the vegetable farm and orchard were also canned and stored here. If you're not familiar with the root cellar, the basic purpose is to store things away from light, weather, and in a cool environment to prevent spoilage. Root cellars also make a good tornado shelter in a pinch, since they are underground and supported by earth or concrete walls. This outdoor fireplace was used for barbecues, parties, and dinners. According to the sign, it was constructed in 1948. Next to it, we also have the pump house, which sits atop the first well drilled at the ranch, and the water wheel, which once carried water from the pump house. Both were also constructed in 1948. Here we have the suspension bridge, which once spanned a fish pond created in 1948 for the enjoyment of guests. Up next is the guest house, which had four suites for guests, including living area slash bedroom, dressing room, and bathroom. The guest house was built in 1951 and was once just south of an orchard with several varieties of fruit tree. Here's a better view of the guest house from the front.
The next gazebo was another amenity for guests of the ranch and included a spring-fed water fountain and small refrigerator. Next to the gazebo is a duplex, but unfortunately the sign was too dirty to read at the time and I did not come prepared to clean it. I'm guessing it was another guest space since this gazebo was built specifically for guests. This area to our left, just before the sign, was home to a swimming pool, which amassed 125 feet by 50 feet, and was built in 1948 when many of the other guest structures were created. In 1979, this swimming pool was filled in, and on hot days here, you'll wish it was still operating. Beside the now filled in pool, we have the generator building. This was the second electric facility on site, and was known as the diesel house, due to the diesel engine which powered the generator. This building was constructed in 1946. The bathhouse is what we would call a changing area or dressing room. On one side women would change to enter the pool and men would do so on the other side. Here's another view of the water tower from the opposite side. I really love the door to nowhere on the second floor. I'm sure there were stairs of some kind here in the past. To the left of the water tower we can now see the spring house, the well, and just past them both are some of the restrooms. The diesel oil support is a series of concrete supports which once held the diesel oil tank to support the fuel use at the ranch in the 1940s. The modern equivalent are those horizontal tanks that look like they're on metal stilts. While observing this sign about supports, I apparently scared up a bevy of quail. I believe they were California quail based on the color of their heads and top knots. Here are the actual diesel oil supports looking out of context like some ancient standing stones. As I walked to the other side of the park, I crossed the suspension bridge, but we'll have to imagine the pond that was once beneath it. Here we can see the horse barn, which we'll see more of soon. This sign describes the known history of Tool Springs, starting with the Army Corps of Engineers scouting the area in the 1860s, noting that travelers between Nevada and Prescott, Arizona would stop here for water. The sign also notes that the original springs have dried up, but were located under the duplex we saw earlier. This was the site of the cookhouse, which later became the Tool Springs Ranch Casino. The cookhouse was built in 1942 and ultimately demolished due to fire in the late 1970s. This intergate arbor was the original path to the cookhouse slash casino, and appears to be the only remnant left of this once popular part of the ranch.
Here's another shot of the horse barn with the hay barn looming behind it to the right. These buildings are some of the other animal houses on the ranch, which were built to contain chickens, hogs, and other smaller livestock. This area adjacent to the cookhouse was once the site of tennis courts which were built in 1942, the same year the cookhouse was built. The tennis courts were demolished in the late 1970s near the time the cookhouse was demolished. Here is a better view of the livestock buildings. I will not be walking closer to them it is just too hot out and these are only accessible via a paved walkway which makes it even hotter. Tool Springs Ranch operated as a working ranch from 1941 to 1959. One of the most impressive features of the ranch was the irrigation system designed by ranch foreman Cliff Devaney. The land was graded to ensure gravity would assist water flow to desired areas. A 600-foot well was drilled and used alongside other wells on the property to create a system of concrete laterals which control gates to control where water flowed. It was so impressive that several Clark County services held a public demonstration here in 1944. The adobe hut is the oldest building on the ranch and is believed to have been constructed around 1910 and may have been used for the stagecoach route. Here is the adobe hut itself, which is held up considerably well for a 110-year-old building. Next, we arrive at the horse barn and garage. Both were originally built in 1948, although the garage was actually a laundry house and canning area originally. The garage eventually came into use by the park, and you can see modern padlocks and some parked vehicles parked nearby as well. Here's another angle of the horse barn. As we move toward the garage, you can see it's been modernized with this big tank outside and lighting, as well as new locks on the garage doors. Now we'll begin to walk out of the historic ranch area and toward the four ponds. Let's take a moment to play hide and seek with this peacock who is peering at me from around a tree. Here are a couple shots I took of the peacock hiding behind the tree trunk. Looks like I've got a model here, folks. This peacock knows his poses. Now we see the historic hay barn and some construction, which we'll talk more about shortly. Here is an example of the covered picnic area, of which there are many near the four ponds. The largest pond is stocked with rainbow trout and channel catfish seasonally, but other fish live in the pond as well, just are not regularly stocked. You must have a license to fish here, and there is a three bag limit on what you catch. This pipe pumps water into the pond, but I can't say from where. I'll only briefly explore the pond areas, as all four are quite similar. Walking the path around the pond, there are ducks, geese, and various waterfowl. The animals here are quite used to people, especially the geese, since many people feed them. The good thing is, that means we can walk right through a gaggle of geese without concern over being pecked. Here is some type of small duck or waterfowl diving for food.
I tried quite hard to get a shot of a duck bringing up food, and I did except this one appears to be eating some kind of plant rather than a small fish which I expected. Sharing the path with the construction fencing, we'll next encounter some of the geese I spoke about. Here's a shot of one of the geese drying its wings after a dip in the pond. Now back to the hay barn. The hay barn is being renovated, but with some changes to accommodate an event space and the area outside is being landscaped. There's controversy locally over these changes, and some have attempted to stop them. The dispute is over the impact of specializing the space on the historic structure, animal life, and nearby residences. Opponents are concerned that this space will attract larger events, which will place additional stress on the park, and some allowances could have a direct effect on visitors, such as allowing amplified sound. The city also mentions rules regarding alcohol sales, and that raises concerns for me as to what type and size of events would be selling alcohol. The city FAQs do state that all construction has been approved by the Historical Preservation Society. We'll finish walking around this pond a bit, then we're going to head over to the biking area. This gravel parking lot is the nearest parking to the bike trails and pump track. I love that it's actually a little hard to find the bike area if you don't know it's there. We park along a fence and there's a small, somewhat hidden opening to access this side of the park from. Constructed earlier this year, Floyd Lamb now has cross-country mountain bike trails and a pump track. The cross-country trails consist of a main beginner line, three intermediate descents, and one advanced descent. The trails total about three miles, which you can see in my other video of this trail. This is a shot of the bottom of Descent D with a section I call the rollers. You can see footage of me riding down these somewhat timidly in my other videos. Here we have the pump track. If you'd like to see more of it, check out my other videos where I ride through it. Exiting the pump track area, we head back to the parking lot and on to our next adventure. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.